It is Raining Ravens back with another video. Uh, last week I posted a video announcing the fact that we have 10k subscribers on the channel now. And uh, I'm, I was asking for you guys to put your questions down in the comment section and I would respond to them. Uh, in this 10k Q&A video. Well, I'm a man of my word. The video is here and I have a bunch of your comments. Let's get right into it. Our first question comes from a fellow YouTuber known as Great One Devore. He writes, let's go 10k. Who is the Great One? Who gives you the most trouble in Madden? Uh, well, for me, obviously the Great One is obviously a YouTuber. Like I just said, uh, he does Madden content and he does uh, a lot of Dolphins related stuff. He's a huge Miami Dolphins fan. And then as far as who gives me the most trouble in Madden, it is by far the official mole. I think I only beat him once this year, Madden 17. Dude's a beast. The next question comes from Bro I'm Cooking. He says, who inspired you to do YouTube? Um, there's a guy on YouTube that goes by the name D1 Redman. Uh, he's the first YouTube I've ever subscribed to. Uh, this was back in 2006. He was running a weekly show on his channel where he would do Ravens updates videos every single week before and after Ravens games. And at the end of, or at the beginning of every one of his episodes, he'd hold up fan art uh, in front of the camera. And um, I think I sent him a video as well as a picture of me, um, you know, standing in front of my Ray Lewis sacking JP Lossman screenshot. Check this out. <laughs> This is Ranson in Skokie, Illinois, wearing his Ravens gear, and he has, oh, wait a minute, who got Ray Lewis uh, sang him one of the Buffalo Bills. Hopefully we get several of them, and then next week when we play them. So yeah, that was me. Uh, shout out to D1 Redman. He's the guy who inspired me to start making YouTube videos, and um, I hope you're doing well. My next question comes from Phantom Neptune. He asks, how and when did you become a Ravens fan? Uh, well, most of you guys know I live in Chicago uh, for the majority of my life. I'm still here. Um, and in 2002, uh, it was right after church sometime, uh, we went to my buddy's house and they flipped on the TV and it was a Bears game and the Bears were getting absolutely smoked. It was like 40 to maybe 7. Um, so as, you know, Fox does regularly, if there's a game that's a blowout, they'll switch it to another game that's, you know, a better game. So. I, re I remember the announcer saying, all right, we're going to go ahead and take you on over to Baltimore and see what they're doing there. And it was the Ravens, I think, versus either the, uh, maybe the Saints. I don't recall. But I do remember the guy that really got me interested in football was number 75. As soon as they switched, as soon as the network switched to the Bears game, uh, from the Bears game to the Ravens game, I keyed in on number 75, Jonathan Ogden. Absolutely monster of a human being. Uh... And, you know, he's the guy that really got me interested in the team. So, uh, by the time they had switched on over to the game, it was like fourth quarter. The game was just over. And uh, I looked at my friend. I said, hey, um, number 75, how do, I, how do I watch him play again? Um, and I didn't know anything about football. So, I'm like, are they going to play again this week or next week? He's like, yeah, they'll be playing exactly a week from now next Sunday. And you should come by and watch them. So, I did. And ever since then, I've not missed a single Ravens game. All because of Jonathan Ogden. What a legend he is. And, um, you know, it's just amazing to see that I've I've stuck with the team this long. And, um, you know, it's still maintaining my interest. All because of one guy. Really cool. My next question comes from Oriole. This guy's a regular on my streams. He says, congrats on 10K. I won't ask you to be my dad. That's a little bit weird. Uh, but I will ask, do you have any new games you plan on playing? Uh, yeah, definitely. There's a game I've been long awaiting called Friday the 13th, The Game. That's set to drop either this month or in May. Uh, either way, I'm really excited to play. A lot of you guys have indicated your interest in it and the fact that you are going to be purchasing the game to play with me on, on the stream live. So I can't wait for that game to drop Friday the 13th, uh, hopefully coming soon. Thanks for your question. My next question comes from Matt the Gamer. He says, what made you start YouTube and what made you keep going? Uh, so I actually answered the first part of that question. Uh, it was D1 Redman who got me into YouTube and actually making my own YouTube videos. And what made me keep going is the constant support. Every time I go live, uh, you guys show up on a regular basis. Uh, some of you guys are part of the notification squad, which I extra appreciate you for. 
Uh, if you didn't know what that is, that's when you click that little bell next to the subscribe button and it pops up as a notification on your phone every time I go stre live streaming. So uh, that's what keeps me going, man. It's I have a dedicated, uh, loving subscriber base. Um, as small as it is, you guys are dedicated and I appreciate that. And uh, you guys keep me going. It's the nice comments you leave on my channel. Uh, the nice tweets I get. I got a tweet like a few weeks ago that says, hey, Double R, um, you know, I, you, you streaming makes my day. Or uh, I wasn't having a really good day today, but then you started streaming and it uh, brightened up my day a little bit. So little things like that uh, to me are big things. And um, that's what keeps me going. Great question. Thank you. The next question comes from Jasper Coburn Gillespie. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right. He asks, why are you a Trump supporter? Um, well, for me, it was, you know, once election time came around and the candidates started being announced for who was running for president, um, once Donald Trump announced he was running for president, uh, he had my full support only because he's the only guy that was part of the panel that had no political experience at all. Um, I'm always a guy that's going to root for the underdog. I'm always going to be the guy that's going to vote for the Cinderella type story. <clears throat> and also a lot of his uh, beliefs um, fall in line with mine. Like I'm a big supporter of law enforcement and the judicial system and uh, keeping America first and looking out for our interests first above all other things, American people's interests and protecting the American people. And um, that's what I felt Trump was all about and that's what he is all about. So that's why he has my full undying support. My next question comes from Jay Money. He says, when and why did you become a Christian? Um, that's a good question. I actually grew up in a Catholic family uh, where we would go to church or I guess you could call a mass every single week. Um, and my parents would do that for us, you know, as me, my sister and I were growing up. And, you know, once we hit high school, I didn't really go to church anymore. Um, it just didn't, wasn't impactful enough for me. I didn't really get anything out of it. Um, and I, I can't speak for all Catholic churches, but the one that we went to, uh, the priest himself said for us to not read the Bible uh, outside of the church capacity because we might not understand it and get um, led away from the gospel. So, um, I guess you could say the opposite happened. You know, I didn't read the Bible and I got led away from church. Um, a few years later in 2006, one of my good friends, a guy that I, you know, grew up with since second grade, um, he invited me to his church, a Christian church. And, um, man, the second I got in there, I felt like the pastor was talking right to me. Uh, he was preaching on the 10 commandments. Um, and he said, you know, a lot of people live their life, you know, uh, treating the Bible as a buffet. They pick and choose pieces that they like and other pieces maybe they don't really pay attention to. But he said, if you break one of the Lord's commands, you know, there's adultery, there's murder and stuff. A lot of people are good in those departments, but what about stealing? What about lying? Um, bearing false witness, you know. Um, <clears throat> so he explained it this way, and it says in the Bible too, if you violate one of the Lord's Ten Commands, you violated all of them, and you are guilty. Um, so I realized that, and I realized that I'm in eminent need for a Savior, and my Savior, uh, I'll say it boldly, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, he's, you know, I've never really been a bad kid growing up, never really got into drugs, never really got into, you know, messed around. I never really questioned authority, but... You know, that makes me a good person on earth, but, you know, according to God's um, directions and God's um, criteria for being good, um, I'm not good. So I realized that my need for a savior and uh, I gave my life to the Lord right then and there during that sermon and um, I'm sold out for Christ. You know, that's that's what it is. I'm, I'm very aware that the world could end tomorrow. And when it does, I want to go and uh, be with them in heaven, of course. So uh, thank you for your question, Jay Money. It's a really important one. Thank you. My next question comes from Tic Tacs. Uh, he says, oh, it's a three-part question here. He says, why do you wear your hat backwards? Uh, no specific reason. It's just comfortable that way. Sometimes I'll wear it with the bill facing forward. Other times I'll wear it with the bill facing backwards. No significance or anything, just comfort. 
Uh, number two, why are you such a legend? Dude, I appreciate the compliment. I don't think I am, uh, but I would, I would really appreciate the compliment. Thank you. And number three, is Flacco Elite? 100% yes. And I think I know someone that would agree with me. I think Joe Flacco is actually a very elite quarterback. I would say absolutely he is an elite quarterback. The next question comes from Peter Phillips. He asks, have you ever considered a PlayStation system and what are your thoughts on MLB The Show? Um, yes, 100% I've considered a PlayStation system, um, mainly because a large subset of my viewer base um, owns a PS4. A lot of them play Madden on the PS4 and I'd like to eventually play with them uh, on my streams, but as of right now, um, I'm going to hold off on the console. I'm going to stick to my Xbox One. And as far as the MLB, the show, um, I, I find baseball tremendously boring. I'll go ahead and say it. I know right now the biggest thing, you know, is baseball and it's, you know, it's big in sports, big in video games, but I just don't care for it. I'm not going to pretend like I like it at all. I mean, different strokes for different folks, right? And uh, I feel like I'm not one of them folks, if that makes sense. The next question comes from Modern Taco. He says, also, do you prefer unibrow or no brows at all? That's a little weird. That's a little bit weird, Modern Taco. But I'm going to go ahead and say um, probably having a unibrow isn't the worst thing. Um, and I know there's a genetic condition where you can't grow brows at all. I think both of those are acceptable. Uh, nothing wrong. You're not less of a person if you have either one. Our next question comes from Max Weinstein. He says, how much money, if you have to guess, would you have spent so far in your life on Ravens memorabilia, tickets, or anything else Ravens related? Um, wow, that's... When you think about it, it is a lot. Uh, I've been a Ravens fan since 2002, but I didn't start attending games till 2005. And ever since 2005, I've been attending one or two games a year. Um, I'll remind you, I'm in Chicago, so whenever the Ravens play at home, that's actually an away game for me. Um, and it comes with a lot of expenses. Uh, rental cars, um, hotel, lodging, and stuff like that. And then also, if I'm going to fly all the way to Baltimore, I'm going to get a good seat for the game. I'm not going to sit in a nosebleed. So we're looking at four to $500 for the ticket and everything. So altogether, I want to say, including Ravens jerseys and everything, you said everything Ravens related, probably in the ballpark of five to $7,000 so far. The next question comes from Textbook Win. He asks, does YouTube pay your bills? Um, at the moment, it does not. Um, I get paid roughly, uh, I was gonna post a live screenshot of my YouTube dashboard where it shows exactly how much I make, but then uh, shout out to my boy Bangle, a fellow YouTuber. Um, he said, hey, Double R, it might not be a good idea because uh, that's against YouTube terms of service. So I won't show you the live screenshot, but I will tell you how much I make roughly uh, on a daily basis. So roughly uh, every day on YouTube, I'll make 80 cents to $1.13 on a really good day. Um, so it's not really paying the bills and um, YouTube doesn't pay you unless you reach $100 in your balance. So. You know, if you do the math, that's only like 30, roughly $30 a month. So I have to wait four months every time uh, to get a paycheck from YouTube. And when I do get a paycheck every four months, it's roughly like 120 ish dollars. So, uh, so there's that, you know, I get $120 every four months. But then when I'm streaming, uh, some people are generous enough to leave donations, which are always appreciated, never mandatory. Uh, but that certainly helps too. But even with the donations and what YouTube pays me, absolutely not, does not pay the bills. I'm not leaving my day job at all uh, anytime soon. My next question comes from Andre Robinson. He asks, how old are you? Do you plan on getting married at any time? That's actually two questions, but uh, I'm 30 years old this September. Um, and do I plan on getting married? Uh, yes. Uh, currently, I am in the middle of transitioning from my place here in Chicago to Las Vegas. I just got hired for a job in Las Vegas. And I believe it's a position that the Lord has uh, pinpointed me for and handpicked and selected me for. And I think that he'll do similar things um, for my relationships as well. And that could be me coming across a good Christian girl out there and uh, starting my own family soon someday. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely open to it. So thank you for your question. My next question comes from Fly Gaming. He says, 
Congrats, man, on 10K, man. I wasn't here since day one, but that doesn't mean I'm not a real fan. Congrats, man. My question is, what helps you and inspire new series and special vids for your channel? Um, really nothing. I try to be my own, you know, my own gamer, my own streamer. I don't uh, copy off of what other people do. Um, I try to be authentic to myself because, you know, it's just, <clears throat> that's the only inspiration I need. Is uh, Sometimes I even ask you guys on Twitter, hey, what games do you want me to stream? I'll do that, but like, I'll never... You know, look around YouTube and see what game is getting the you know the most YouTube algorithm. Oh, let me go stream that. No, that's not the case. Uh, I stream what I enjoy. I stream what you guys enjoy, and that's about it. That's the only inspiration I need. My next question comes from Tennessee Couponer. Great work on your channel, by the way. Uh, congrats on 10K subscribers. Here are my questions. Number one, what inspired you to create your channel? I already went over that. That's D1 Redman. Uh, and also two, what advice would you give uh, to any channel? Take care and God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, as far as advice I'd give to anyone that has their own channel is to, again, like I said earlier, just be yourself. Uh, don't go by what other people are doing or what other people tell you to do. Because uh, then you're going to turn this thing called YouTube into a chore. Um, for me, I'd rather it not be a chore. I'd like it to be a hobby, and that's what it is. Uh, to me, it's just one of those things that I, I just get on and I start streaming games that you guys like. And um, I think that any new content creator should do the same thing with their channel. Not just live streamers, but like find something that interests you, stick to it. Um, constant uploads are a plus if you can do it, if you can pull it off. Um, and also, you know, just um, communicate with your subscribers because you have to realize your channel is literally nothing without those who watch it. So, hope that helps as well. My next question comes from a uh, fellow YouTuber, also a professional Madden player. He actually played in eSports. Um, he was um, called by EA Sports to fly over to Seattle, Washington uh, to play in an official Madden tournament. His name is TT23, but I call him Taylor. Uh, he asks, so what was your favorite stream hype moment along this journey to 10K? The answer I'm going to give you, Taylor, is uh, kind of cheesy, I know, but it's every time I stream. Because every time I stream, I'm I'm rem I, I'm taken back to where I started. You know, I come from a family that's really big into um, you know f plants. You know, and I never really understood the excitement between behind you know planting a little seed and watching it grow into something. And but if you think about it, you know, I've kind of done the same thing with this channel. Look at my first four or five. Uh, months of streaming um, My first four or five months were brutal. I thought about quitting a lot of times most of the times I'd stream to only one viewer if that uh, But you know it was a constant drive that had me going I kept going kept pushing through and now I've built up a pretty loyal uh, Subscriber base, you know, you can see him in a discord you can see him on Twitter um, And you can definitely see him in my chat when I'm streaming so uh, That is my favorite moment and every time I stream that becomes my new favorite moment, just to see my own channel grow and the community that we've created. Um, to me, that's something surreal and awesome. Thank you for your question, Taylor. And the final question of this 10K Q&A comes from RicoManiac0812. My boy 10K, you deserve it. Do you ever think that one day you could not work a 9 to 5 and just do YouTube? Um, I've certainly not uh, ruled out the possibility, but like I said, right now, uh, it's not looking like that's going to happen anytime soon. I have a very rewarding career job now uh, that the Lord's blessed me with, and um, I'm not in a position right now where I can say, all right, apples to apples, I'm making this much on YouTube and this much in my career job. Um, you know, which one do I go after? Right now, I gotta stick with my career. That's what's putting the food on the table. That's what's paying the bills. Uh, but once, if we do reach that point where we have to start asking ourselves, all right, do we take a break from work to do full-time YouTube? Uh, I'll definitely bring that to your attention and we'll discuss it uh, as like a stream family here on YouTube as to what I should do. Um, but like I said, we don't have to worry about that anytime soon. This channel is still a very small potato. I recognize that. I'm remaining humble. Um, so no, that's not going to happen anytime soon, unfortunately. Or fortunately. Depends on how you think about it. 
But uh, that's going to do it for this 10K Q&A. Our next Q&A is going to be at 20K. I'm thinking about doing it every time we double our subscribers. So um, we'll do one at 20K, the next one at 40K. Then, Lord willing, if we hit 80K, we'll do one at 80K and um, so on and so forth. But right now, we're going to sit back and relish in this moment of getting 10,000 subscribers. Truly an awesome feat that uh, I'm blessed for the opportunity uh, to embrace. Because I know what it's like to come from, you know, 10 subscribers. And now we're at 10,000 subscribers. So, believe me, I'm not, uh, I'm not really taking this for granted. I am truly blessed. And I'm, think I'm reminded by it every time I go to YouTube.com. So, thank you guys for being a, a, a very, very um, important part of my life. Uh, for being there for me and... Uh, you know, for all the support you give me on YouTube, on my Discord, uh, and then when you guys show up and talk uh, talk to me during the streams in the chat. Uh, I value you guys very highly. Um, and until next time, guys, it's raining ravens out. Jesus bless all you guys. And go ravens. <laughs>